On the left, we have a three-digit number and a two-digit number, and their product is a five-digit number. Whereas here, we have a three-digit number and a two-digit number, and the product is a four-digit number. So the question I have is, in general, what's the probability you'll end up with a four-digit number versus a five-digit number? Even more generally, if you have an m-digit number and multiply by an n-digit number, then you're going to get an m plus n-digit number or an m plus n minus one-digit number. What's the probability you'll get one of these instead of one of these? In this video, we're going to analyze what the probabilities are as m and n get quite large. And this is going to follow an article written by Professor Art Benjamin, who also is well known for doing mathematical computations like in this TED Talk right over here. So stay tuned where I'll give you ideas of how to approach the problem so you can try it on your own and then reveal a really interesting and insightful solution. A way to start thinking about this is if m is an m-digit number, we can write it as 10 to the m minus 1 times a number x, where x is between 1 and strictly less than 10. For example, if m was 936, it's a three-digit number, so we can write it as x times 10 squared, where x is 9.36. Similarly, we can write capital N as y times 10 to the n minus 1, where y is between 1 and 10 as well. Now the question I have for you is as m and n get very large, so we have large numbers with many digits, what's the behavior of the fraction of the numbers m and n where the product is m plus n digit versus m plus n minus 1 digit? As a hint, think about what the number of digits of m times n is in terms of restrictions on x and y themselves. And then use that to understand what happens when little m and little n get very large. So pause this video right now, try some of the analyses, make some observations, and leave your observations in the actual comments, and come back to the video to get a sense of what the density of the number of pairs m n is, where the product is m plus n digit versus m plus n minus 1 digit. Okay, so let's look at the product then, mn. mn is going to be xy times 10 to the m plus n minus 2. Now, the number of digits in this integer really depends on what this product xy is. Since 1 is less than or equal to y is less than 10, and 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 10, we can kind of draw a diagram right over here. Plotting x and y, going from 1 to 10, on each axis, and the pairs x, y will land in this box region right over here. Okay, if we want this number to be m plus n minus 1 digit, or m plus n digit, it'll depend on what the value of x, y is. If x, y itself is between 1 and strictly less than 10, then it's the case that this number is going to be m plus n minus 1 digit because we have a 10 to the m plus n minus 2. Whereas if it goes up to 100, which is possible, then this is a two-digit number, and so this product is going to be an m plus n digit number. So let's look at the fraction of outcomes that actually are m plus n minus 1 digit. They correspond to pairs x, y that lie in this region and satisfy this inequality right over here. So it's the points x, y that satisfy this inequality. This inequality here is satisfied by everything in this box, so we don't need to consider it. We only really need to consider this inequality here, which can be rewritten as saying that y is strictly less than 10 over x. Now the graph y equals 10 over x looks something like this. It has the point 10, 1. When we plug in x equals 10, we get 1. And when we plug in 1, we get 10. And the graph will look something like this. Now when m is very large, these numbers are numbers between 1 and 10 whose decimal places go out very far. The same thing happens with n. So if we look at the points in here, we're filling this in with dots corresponding to our pairs x, y, and they're filling up a lot of this space. And they get more concentrated as m and n get larger because each of these points correspond to one of these pairs x, y we're considering. And when m is very large, these numbers are between 1 and 10, and their decimals go out many, many spots. So a way to estimate the number of products that have m plus n minus 1 digits in them is to actually look at the region of this box that's taken up by this area right over here. And that's actually an integral. 
So if you look at the area of all possible pairs x, y, it's a 9 by 9 square, so the total area is 81. Whereas the area of the region of pairs x, y that give us the m plus n minus 1 digit numbers is this area right over here, which is the integral from 1 to 10 of this curve right over here, but we have to subtract this area right over here. So it's the integral from 1 to 10 of our function 10 over x dx, but then subtract the area of this rectangle, which has base length 9 and height 1. Okay, and so this works out to 10 times the natural logarithm of 10 minus 1 minus 9 over 81, or 10 ln of 10 minus 9 over 81, which is roughly 0 0.173. This kind of matches our intuition that there are going to be a lot more products that have higher digits than lower digits. But now we have a sense of what the approximate number should be as the number of digits in each M and N get very large. And the key, I think, to this question is thinking about what we actually did. We represented things in terms of these numbers that are between 1 and 10, and then recognize there's an inequality that needs to be satisfied in order for the product to have fewer digits versus more digits. And this technique is great and used throughout mathematics where you look at a discrete problem and you want to get a real flavor for the nature of it. You let the things that are involved grow and then recognize that when you have space filling information, it can be approximated using an integral. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.